Earlier I said there were two types of animation. Well, there's actually three because there's also a fade transition which we're going to look at now in this demo. The reason I didn't refer to it as an animation is there's nothing actually moving, but there is sort of a change to the picture which you might still consider a sort of an animation. We have the customary imports that are required. Let's scroll them off the screen. We don't need to look at them. And of course we extend application and override start. Um, and then at the bottom we do all the normal stuff that you're used to seeing down there. So we got to look at the code right here. Well, we create ourselves a new pane and we create ourselves an ellipse. We set the fill color to red, the stroke color to black, and we size the, or we determine the center X and center Y of our ellipse based on the size of the window. And we're actually going to bind the radius uh, to the width property of the pane so that when we resize the window, the X and Y radii will correspondingly change as they should. Similarly with the X and Y center, we've also done a bind there as you see. So we've got actually a whole bunch of different binds. Uh, so this is not the same, quite the same as event driven programming, but it's the method that you learned in chapter 14 to sort of make figures follow the size of the window. And that's what we're doing here with our ellipse. We add the ellipse to our pane and then we get ready to do a fade transition. So we create a fade transition object called FT. We say it's equal to new fade transition. We give the duration of the fade 3000 milliseconds. So in other words, three seconds. And we assign this to our object ellipse. Now you'll notice that we have a FT set from value and FT set to value. These arguments, if you haven't already guessed, are op opacity values. So 1.0 would be completely opaque and 0 0.1 would be ever so slightly opaque. So in other words, almost completely transparent. Zero would be completely transparent. Notice that the set cycle count has been set to timeline dot indefinite. What this means is this will repeat forever. We aren't going to ever stop it. You saw us do only two cycles of the uh, flag following the sine wave earlier and five cycles of it following the straight line, but this is indefinite, which means it never stops. It's not a set number of cycles. We do have set auto reverse equal to true, which means when it fades out completely, it'll fade back in, in the opposite direction. And then of course, here's where we start the animation going. And the animation simply consists of an ellipse that goes from being opaque to almost completely transparent and then back again. And this keeps repeating over and over again. Now just to spice it up a little bit, make it more interesting, we've also associated the set on mouse pressed event with our ellipse. So when we press a mouse button, then what's going to happen is we'll pause the animation. When we release a mouse button, it will then continue to play. So we'll, we'll try exercising that too when we, when we set the demo running in just a moment here. So with that, I guess we're ready to actually try the demo out. So here we go. Over a period of three seconds, it almost fades out completely and comes back. And this just keeps repeating. Now, if I was to click on this uh, figure, on this pane, I guess, with my mouse, and see, I'm, I've just clicked and I'm holding the button down now, and it has stopped fading out. When I release the button, which I'm going to do right now, it continues. Now I'm going to push it again, and it stays parked in this opaque state. I'm going to release it again now, and it continues through its transition of fading in, fading out. And that's it for this demo.